Welcome, everyone. I think Catherine wins the best prize because she's already set in her Christmas scene behind her. <laughs> there you go. I got a corner in my living room just for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're really super excited here for this class. I've done this class maybe two other times uh, throughout the few years, and people get a lot of good information. And I wanted to bring some experts on in the in the holiday decorating world. Um, so today we have with us Rachel Mor Moriarty, right? Moriarty, yes. <laughs> I it. got it. Um, and she is a decorator slash designer um, in the San Diego area. And she's an award-winning, actually, interior decorator with more than 12 years of experience redesigning wow. houses. So Rachel, want to just say hi there? Hi, everyone. Happy holidays. <laughs> I wore my red. Aww. You wore your red. What, um, so what's one of your favorite traditions during the holidays? So our favorite, like you said, I live in San Diego in Southern California, about 10 minutes from the Mexican border. And uh, our parents actually live in a hacienda on the ocean about oh, wow. 35 minutes south. of. So from door to door, it's about a 35 minute drive. And um, so we, ha we actually skipped the turkey. We head down to Mexico and um, we kind of have, it's kind of a mix of um, like a family, family and Friendsgiving um, sort of event. And uh, we go out for lobster on Thanksgiving wow. evening and um, and then on the next day we do um, tacos and we do all like typical Mexican stuff so awesome I wish I had that holiday I'm in the Northeast so yeah <laughs> the regular we get the regular New York City traditional well I would yeah grass is always greener that sounds amazing <laughs> <laughs> We can uh, flip flop holidays one year or something. Uh, yes, yes. There you yes. go. There you go. How so? Uh, so and next we have Catherine Holt, and I've known Catherine for a few years now, and we've never physically met in person. But I love this girl. She's been. I feel like you've gotten some major su success and exposure in such a short period of time, right, Catherine? You started your, your YouTube channel back in 2014, and you have over 64,000 subscribers on it, over wow. 3.1 million views. I mean, go girl. And wow. the, the best thing is, wow. is that you're doing these how-to videos and DIYs mm -hmm. all on a budget, and you aren't afraid to show that, hey, guys, I don't know everything, but... I am an amateur at this, but you can decorate like a pro. So absolutely fabulous. Absolutely. And I, I just come into this thing totally vulnerable to whatever it was out there and staying current with whatever trends that were out there. And like I mentioned to you guys earlier, retired mom and here I am with the house. And I'm like, uh oh, what are we gonna do? I gotta decorate and decorate on the budget because I am not tapping into my retirement attention and started to just have fun decorating and going on YouTube. And, you where, and where are you based out of? You're out of Atlanta? I am in one of Georgia. Oh, Georgia. Small town, about two hours south of Atlanta. But do I go to Atlanta? A lot. Yeah. Okay, and then another expert we have on here. <laughs> She's got some amazing background music happening just for herself and yeah. <laughs> Bobby McGrath. Um, she is an international award-winning home stager, trainer, speaker, author, and um, I wanted her on here because a lot of times people like celebrating for the holidays and they don't realize that you could still celebrate even if you're on the market. So if any of you guys are planning on going on the market in the next couple of weeks, but you still want to be able to have those holiday traditions. Um, I wanted to give, I wanted to let her give you guys a few pointers on that. Um, and also chime in because she's got a wealth of information. Go Bobby. So, well, I'm competing here, the overhead at the airport. Um, I was just up here in Canada and I love Canada. I've had the best time. Um, so excuse the background noise, but um, yes, Whenever folks are going to sell their home during the holidays, these are the things that I recommend to them. First of all, as you're getting your house ready, uh, get the photographs done before you decorate. 
get them done before you decorate. And if you've already got those items out for the house to make it feel more homey and things, tuck them away for your photos because you don't want to put that time stamp on time stamp on your marketing photos. So there's that. Plus another thing is generally when people decorate, what they do is they add to what they already have in place and it makes the house feel more crowded. And you got to remember people are buying square footage. They want to feel like they've got plenty of space, what, what have you. So what I would recommend is that when you're bringing in items to decorate for the holidays, edit some of the furniture out so that you can still, when you do have those, uh, the house tours during that time, people still feel this warm, spacious uh, place. But I also recommend that you really have a talk with yourself and determine, you know what? What are those pieces that I need to really feel like I'm in the holidays? And just do those, like one or two things. Like in my home, it would be, um, the Christmas tree, and then I have what I call my baby bench, and it's a big, huge window seat. It's like this, almost about the size of a twin bed, right, Tori? Yeah. And um, yeah, and I love to put garland up around the windows, and then I bring out special uh, pillows. There's even a Santa pillow because that baby bench, to me, having that and the Christmas tree up, is the holiday for me. So if I were to be putting my home on the market, I would probably do my tree. And that particular item. And let's talk about outside just real quick. Same thing. Don't have a beautiful wreath and thing on for your photos. Go ahead, put the wreath up giving afterwards. You all right now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm on a roll. I'm sorry. So, okay, I'll save some more. I'll save. You gave I'll save some for later. Happened, see? Oh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. <laughs> I still, okay. I, I okay. Okay. Next. <laughs> but, you know, I, I get on a roll. I get on a roll in my head, you know? Since you already mentioned it, let me just show what you were talking about, that baby bench. Do you guys see it? Ah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Right? That's my baby bench. Yep. Love it. Nothing's better than to sit there and watch the snow fall from oh. that. I love that. Love and so I love it at nighttime with those lights. That's just my favorite. So there, I guess I have nothing else to say. So <laughs> and I'm kind of shocked. I'm kind of shocked that you went colored. You went colored lights. I know, right? It's like each Let's house has a different flavor. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit. But um, okay. so thank you guys all so much for joining me. I see Bonnie on here, Brenda, Beverly, Carol, Donna, uh, Kay, Bart, Helms, Peg, sixteen, Taylor, Mary, um, and a couple others over there. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tori Toth. I'm a celebrity home stager, best-selling author and lifestyle expert. And um, I really just try overall to help people make their spaces feel more at home. I, I think of it as it's your retreat. It's your one little area in this whole entire big world that you can call your own. So why not make it look up to the, you know, to its potential. Um, so the holidays I know can be very stressful for, for, for people and it doesn't have to be like, I know my mom, she, she loves entertaining, but then at the same time, it's just, she gets so stressed about it and that stress, you know, then gets put on all of her guests. So that's kind of why I created this class a few years back. Not, and I also just like decorating and I always think people, I'm leaving you until I need you again. Okay. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Just I need to remember that I need to unmute you. Um, but <laughs> so there's just also too, I love decorating. And so I like doing DIYs. Um, I, I met Catherine on YouTube. So I do have a lot of DIYs for the holidays over there as well. And we'll talk about how you guys can, can connect with us later um, after this. So you can see all of our other amazing stuff that we do. But let's just get started here. Um, so Rachel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What would you like to get started with? So let's talk about, well, maybe let's start with Bobby first. And then you'll go into a little bit of this. Hold on. Sure, sure. So Ms. Bobby. I've been unmuted. Okay, right on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're traveling right now. And I'm sure there's yes. a lot of people on here that are dealing with outside, out-of-towners that are coming into their homes. So, um, since you're in the airport, what do you think people should have inside their homes um, when people arrive into their inn as a guest? As a guest. Well, what I like to do is uh, 
in my guest room, I like to have like, um, I use a big basket and I like to have towels there and those little small toiletries and things because I just want them to feel welcome and I want them to have what they need. Um, I think it's important to have an extra blanket in there. I love to have just a little something like some kind of, sometimes I'll even take like Christmas lights and put it into a nice big vase or something next to their bed so that when they walk in, there's that low glowing going on. I just love that feel. And then a few little things to snack on because uh, when you travel, sometimes you need to step away from all of the action and the rest of the house and retreat. And I, I want them to feel welcome and I want them to feel like this is their space. So I like to have those, you know, just those little comforts into the room. And I do, you know, those old fashioned, um, those little, uh, the water glass, you know, that flips over on the top of the uh, decanter of water. I love mm. to have that for my guests as well. It's just, I, I love the, the history of that. And it just, it makes people feel special. So those are just a few of the things I like to do. Rachel, do you have anything to add about um, just making guests feel more welcome in your house when they're coming in? Yeah. So um, I always suggest, when, when I come in to do guest rooms, or even prepare somebody's um, child, child's room to be a guest room. That's often what I, I'll come in and do on a half day makeover. I really, really edit things out. Um, so I suggest really going through, if you're, it's a storage room, you need to pull all that extra stuff that doesn't make it feel cohesive. You want it to feel like like a hotel room, basically. If it's your child's room, take away all the plush, all the plush, get your white sheets. Um, I, I live in a smallish house, so I have to do that in my home. One of my kids' rooms is always one of our guest rooms. So I transform it in just a couple of hours. And of course, we have, and I don't use children's furniture in my in my um, kids' room. I use like adult um, antiques. So I'm able to store away the clutter and toys and make it feel very um, warm and welcoming. But like Bobby said, I always have the extra blankets. They, you know, that first night, if it's dark and they don't know their way around the house, it is great. I do the same thing with the, with the decanter next to the bed. I put the Wi-Fi code mm -hmm. um, next to the bed. I also put a sleep mask and earplugs because I do have small ones and they get up and they run around. Um, extra toiletries, um, just what Bobby said, all those things just in case they need anything. I also bring in an extra chair to use as a, like a luggage rack or something like that. Um, so that you can pull things from different places in your home and really create all of that functionality. Catherine, do you have anything on the, on anything else? Anything? Oh, wait, I got to unmute you. What happened? How'd you get muted? <laughs> Go ahead, girl. <laughs> Basically, just exactly what everyone has already said. You want to make that room as if it's their full home when they get there. You do want them to have that living room experience and that small kitchen experience because depending on the time that they arrive, they're tired, they don't need to be looking for things, and you definitely don't want to be up late at night trying to put all of the amenities into the bedroom. So I keep it simple. And that's also the place that I keep my visitors' gifts. So your parting gift mm. is right next to your bed. So you know that when mm. you're leaving, you're packing, you can go ahead and put that in your bag. Oh, I'm coming to your house. What kind of gifts do you give? <laughs> well, I like my DIYs, like last year I did the little canvas and I had a little reindeer on it with a bow because people were visiting you for the holidays. It may just be for a short time, but yet the holidays are still existing and they didn't fully decorate. So when they got back home, there was nothing. So it's just a little something that they can have to decorate their home and something that they can keep. Cool. So I did a little canvas last year. It was blue and white and then I added that little sparkle reindeer on it. And that video is posted, by the way. I don't give out sugary treats like the hot chocolate stuff because you never know the health of someone. So I don't do a lot of food items, but more decorative items for you to take with you. What about, wait, hold on one second. Ka Carol, did you have a question? Carol, did you have a question? Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, I, I was... Uh, my headphones was acting up, but I'm in the group oh, now. Oh, okay. Well, Thank you. Well, welcome. I just wanted to say hi. I wanted to see if you had a question. So if you guys do have a question um, on your sidebar there, you should be, you should have a hand. So you could just raise your hand 
and I'll unmute you and you guys can ask away because we want to make sure that we are talking about topics that you guys are interested in um, and that we're able to help solve your problems. So staying on the topic of uh, guests and having guests in your house, do you guys do any guest, um, like do you do holiday bars? So would you have a coffee bar? Do you do mixed drinks? Um, do you... How, like, how accessible do you make the rest of your house besides the guest room? Rachel, you want to go? Yeah, so I try to do a little kind of swanky, I, I call it a beverage cart. Um, not everybody in my family is a drinker, so um, I like to have, um, well, I'll look, go to Trader Joe's and not only get like the Pellegrino, but they have some beautiful sparkling, flavored sparkling drinks as well now mm -hmm. that look wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but I will create um, sort of that beverage cart um, look in my dining room. Mm -hmm. Catherine, how about you? Do you, do you, do you I hope I, now my audio went out on you, so I'm assuming you wanted to know about serving beverages to your guests and what things you put on them. Right? Just, um, yeah, said? just overall, how else do you, uh, make your, how else do you make your house avail? Sorry, hold on. I'm muting Bobby again. How else do you make your house available? Like for your guests, do you do coffee bars? <laughs> Uh, dessert bar, breakfast bars, anything like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I just love island styling, as they call it. I love putting all of that out, but I also like to make it pretty. Now, I do it on the side when the guests do kind. I do like to have all the trimmings of the coffee, you know, you've got all your different syrups and things like that, but it's on a very small scale, and I maintain a tea drawer, so it has all, all of that in there, and most, most of our guests are familiar with it, so they know how to open that drawer and get their they need. It has a tray inside of it that I can pull up as visiting. Very nice. That works for me. I, I, I like the tea, the tea drawer. I need one of those. <laughs> Bobby, how about you? <laughs> Bobby, you showed me, um, you showed me a picture. I'll put it up in a second, but you like, you oh yeah. You don't know when guests are always arriving. So what, right. how, do you do that? how do you handle that? What I love to do is this, when people come, I, loved, I love to feed people. And so when you have people who are flying in or driving it, you never know when exactly they're going to be coming. So mm -hmm. I like to make up a charcuterie like, like we have here. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll go to the store and I'll pick up a variety of cheeses and I make sure that I have like a goat cheese and another type of, of uh, you know, different things, the different meats. And then I just... I have it already into the refrigerator, and when I see them pulling down my driveway, I just like to pull out my bamboo cutting board that I only use for the charcuterie, and um, I'll lay it out. And it's, you know, putting the fruit and the vegetables. I like to have the salmon, and then I'll have like a three-tiered plate of, of uh, different breads and crackers, and then they feel welcome. And there's something about gathering around the table that has, you know, just these little, little bits. Everybody finds something that they like. I like to do the little pickles too. I just think they're so cute. I even love to shop for them. <laughs> so I, I do. I, I do like, and I'll just put it all together and then you can just, you, it can oh. go on the bar. Wait, I have, another, I have the other picture too that you, you oh, gave okay. me. Let Let's see. That one for a second. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking, what did I send? What did I send? <laughs> this is going to make oh, you Oh, yes. Welcome and in. this one, yeah, and this is really fun. And this is easy. You know, it's like when you have people coming, so it's, young, um, young. I true, truly believe that, you know what, this is just pudding, right? But it's like when you take the extra time to do simple things, like the layers, you know, I think that was banana um, pudding with the chocolate on top. And then the, mm -hmm. just, the, the, just the little design, when you bring that out on a tray, people just light up right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's, I think that's what's special when people come into your home. You can take an everyday thing that you have into the cupboard, like if somebody's coming last minute, you could whip this up, boom, like that, right? And it, it just makes people feel special. And I do, I love it when people, you know, they just light up and they enjoy it. So it's all about making it easy for you so that you can enjoy your time with them. So that's why I like to do that, those types of things. 
So, and Bobby, would you recommend having something like this out when it comes time to um, be showing your house? So you're showing your house off during the holidays um, if you're mm -hmm. selling your home. And I really think right. that having these little special touches and being able to access the different uh, five senses, you know, the taste, smell, blah, blah, right. blah. Um, so you, do you think it's wise to have something like this out to make the buyer a little bit more memorable, to make it feel a little bit more memorable? You know, that's a that I love that question because um, I I have a style when I'm staging homes. I don't want those things out for the photographs. To me, it's room dandruff. However, when people actually come into the home, I mean, how nice is it to have a tray? You know, maybe it's it's covered, and um, you know, with a little note there that says, you know, please enjoy, you know, enjoy these while you look around the house. Of course, everybody loves that type of stuff. So I like to do that. Um, and you have it available and it's fun because remember one of the things you want to do, the longer someone stays in your home that's for sale, the more familiar they feel with the home. And remember, it's that familiarity that starts to give them that feeling of home. So you bet. Uh, I think it would be a great idea to have, to have just a little something set out like that. So, I, yes, I love that. I think the same thing too. Even, even if you don't, something dealing with the sense and the senses. So um, what, what's your favorite sense? So uh, since you're unmuted right now, what's your favorite scent around the holiday season? Uh, well, I love cinnamon. I love that whole cinnamon and apple. Oh my gosh, I'm over the moon for that. I see now here's the deal. I don't recommend that you scent your house when the house is on the market, but you can get away with it during the holidays. So, um, but I do. I love that cinnamon apple. It just makes my heart sing. It feels like it, it feels like a warm blanket going up your nose. Oh, mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Catherine. It smells you. like a warm blanket. <laughs> Catherine, how about you? What's your favorite scent during this time of year? I am. You know, I know it's not a holiday scent, but I love citrus. I love the smell of lemony smells and citrus orange. I just I love those, and they're. They're warm when you mix those, even with your essential oils, so you can combine them. But just that hint of citrus just always relaxes me. I almost, I know it's not quick. Have you ever tried um, the citrus cilantro? Yes. Do you hear me? Hello? Catherine might be having some. No, I haven't. The citrus cilantro from Pier 1? No, I have not tried that. You have to. It's one of my favorite scents. Hmm. I love evergreen, but how about you, Rachel? So I love citrus too. Again, we're, we're in Southern California, so we have so many citrus trees in our yard. Um, I use um, citrus in my home as decor all, pretty much all year long. Mm. Uh, but what I will do is I will actually take it and boil it. So I kind of get that, that scent in the house. I love that scent more than, um, scented cleaners. I would love, yes. I like that scent. Um, but this, but you, the use of lemon actually is very calming. So it's a wonderful scent. If you are during the holidays, when you're starting to feel, maybe you're getting, you know, ready for guests and that's kind of like crazy, you know, cleaning and it gets worse before it gets better. You know, that, that stage I'd love to use, um, lemon i also mm -hmm. love lavender that's another thing oh, that absolutely. I do. it's relaxing it's again things that you can use not so much for sale in your home but for living in your home for preparing right. for guests um definitely reduces also um peppermint, peppermint. oh yeah i like peppermint it's too. wonderful that's at this time of the year and it totally eases stress so um you yeah. know what i while we're on the oh, scent okay. thing um there's uh, this is something I saw one time. It was a little, uh, little, um, little tiny crock pot, and it holds maybe a cup. And what I love to do is I'll take my little crock pot and put it into the corner, and I'll drop in cinnamon sticks, cinnamon sticks. and oh. cloves, and uh, maybe oh, some that. rinds, some orange rinds, yes. and just let that. I do love that smell. Again, it's back to most cinnamon, uh -huh. but um, yeah, I, I just love that, and I just keep adding water to it, you know, and. Uh, that is one of my favorites. As you're talking, you guys, I'm, I'm just going, oh, I got to pull that out this year. When I get I'm home, time. I'm pulling I'm that out. Yeah. <laughs> um, hold on. 
Anita, um, Anita's on the call. She's saying she's having a glitch. So Anita, it may be your computer. You might not be able, she's, she says she can't hear us. So it, it most likely it's your computer. Maybe go check the settings of your computer. Mm -hmm. um, and um, she may work. need to cut, hop out and then hop back in. And there's a, there's a something that says connect your audio. So you may, she may need to click out and then come back in and enable that. When she yes. Back. Yes. So let's talk about decorating styles. Cause Rachel, now, now I'm kind of intrigued because I like when I decorate my house, I, I always consider the style of my house and, and where I'm yes. located um, to make the decorations reflect that in my home. So Rachel, I, like I live on the East coast by the water. Um, but it gets cold up here in New York. And so I have that court, that kind of New York feeling in my home, but you're in California. So how do you embrace where your area in your, in your decorating? So, you know, it really is the same around this time, even in, even in Southern California. Um, we do have a lot of mid century ranch homes. So you do find a lot of that, um, sort of bohemian style decor. Um, I have seen everything from the traditional red and green um, decor all the way to a Danish modern with very white northern lights inspired um, with hearts. They do little red, you know, little hearts everywhere. Very simple. Um, we can, we also do um, very global because we are very close to the Mexican border. Um, so we have all of these very colorful Christmas you know, textiles. Um, so it really, it's all over the board. Um, it's not, it's not really um, location specific here. Okay. Um, how about you, Catherine? Anything that you've seen well, we were, or how you decorate? We are in a military town, so you can only imagine that Santa is also decked out in red, white, and blue. So in a military town, you're going to see people from all over the world celebrating their styles. And that's what I see, everything in all kinds of ways. I can, I can show you pictures, but you'd probably just say, I don't know where you are, where could you possibly be? But the majority of us here, we are traditional very traditional mm -hmm. homes with the wreaths on the door and then the garland draped over the door. So it's very, very simple from the outside to the inside. However, with the change in decor where everything is a little bit more metallic, I see a whole lot of that now. Um, and it's fusing a lot of that traditional with the metallic. So, and a lot of people kind of struggle with that because you don't know how much to put where it doesn't become overpowering. And that's just a trend that everyone's starting to embrace in my area. Yeah, I've done, so I've done red, white, and blue um, before, and that was the Christmas of 9-11, and I was able mm -hmm. to deck out my tree in all red, white, and blue, and I've got, I had firefighters, like all the service men and women from military to, you know, just the people around here digging out 9-11, and I, that's how mm -hmm. I created my tree to celebrate um, that year, and that always stands out kind of in in my stream of Christmas, Christmas picture past, um, because I never really did that before. So mm -hmm. that's a nice little thing, the red, white, and blue to, to show mm -hmm. your support. Right. Yeah. Right. Bobby, Absolutely. are you unmuted? Yeah. Um, I am. I am muted. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy I get to do this now. You know, the people here at the airport have got to be wondering what the heck I'm doing because they can't hear you. You should, they go just on, see me. you should go ask them some, ask them to ask you some questions about holiday <laughs> decorating. <laughs> there you go. Hold on, excuse me. Could you come here for a second? Oh, he's oh, security. Can you still talk to me? Oh, he can't talk to me because oh. he's security. <laughs> <laughs> I might be spending Christmas up here, so <laughs> he's like, I can't talk to you. I'm security. Oh my gosh. So trust me, I'll try again later. Okay. So, what was the question, Miss Tori? <laughs> so, Bobby, uh, Bobby's in Raleigh, North Carolina. And, yes. Um, so, what is there a regional style that you try to implement in your decorating, or something that you see over there? Is it is it more craftsman, traditional? Well, I'll tell you what, like my, my home, so personally, my home is arts and crafts style and I have wood floors with the wood inlays and I have all the built-ins and that arts and crafts feel. So what I like to do is I like to embrace, I like to go like 
history. I, I love to like reach back. So for instance, I used a burlap ribbon in my tree. Um, I like to have, um, you know, decorations from over time. There's a story in my tree and it's like the different ornaments. It's like, you know, when my son turned three or when my other son was born. And so there's a story in the tree, which, you know, you know me, I love my stories. So um, I, I like to use, like when I, when we were sharing the picture of the baby bench, um, the reason I like the colored lights is for me, it recalls a time gone by. So I see that quite a bit. Um, we have log cabins and that type of thing. But yeah, that's just a little little touch. Um, so I just like to have that story. Now, when I'm in people's homes, because to date I've been in like 6,000 homes, when I see Christmas, I seem to see um, there's a history. North Carolina, when you hear those two words together, there's an image, there's a feeling. And yes, a lot of people decorate that feels like North Carolina. But we also have very, very contemporary homes. I'll go in and there's nothing but lights or they'll be very, very metallic um, as was just talked about. So um, it's all over the place, but personally I love the textures and the rich color and kind of that cocooning feel of uh, color. Oh, there we go. Not <laughs> sure what they're talking about right now, but um, you're not calling me to the plane yet. So. Okay, good. <laughs> Um, I love, I mean, let me, Bobby, where'd you go? Let me, let me, oh, I'm here. I'm muting you back. Hey, Tori? Yes. Tori, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Catherine? You gotta love technology, right? You love it when it works. I was going to say my house is, um, my house is, I'm a thrifter and a, an estate sale and flea market person. So I'll, I'm just going to fill in while Go ahead. I'm Go ahead. So, um, so my house is a, like, I call it like a curation. It's, con it's constantly changing. Absolutely. Um, I, so like Bobby said, I have my traditional, um, pieces, you know, baby's first Christmas and, you know, all those ornaments, those always make it. Um, but my house is different every year. It doesn't look the same from year to year because, because we're, you know, because I'm a decorator. And so, <laughs> but the, the thread that usually runs through it is that I have all these like punchy saturated colors. So for me, um, it's, it, I use that as a jumping off point. So I will take the traditional stuff that I have year after year and then, and then throw in whatever my current um, color is. So right now I'm super into this pop of like pink. So I'm, I'll go out and pull some of that into my the ochre, yellow, and, and uh, pink is, is sort of my thing right now. Have you ever done a Frida Christmas? For I so you need don't to do know, that. Rachel is Frida obsessed. She loves her. Mm -hmm. Never mm -hmm. done it? I should, right? You know what? I'm going to do it this year. Do it. I'm going to do it this year. And when I'm down in, in Mexico for Thanksgiving, I'm going to go get all the fixins. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not like I'm wearing a furry collar here for a reason. I'm about to. I will be decorating my Christmas tree this year in white fur, and I'm going to put the faux the faux um, snow on it. It's going to be a real tree with faux snow. How this is going to work? I don't know. <laughs> wow. It will, it will be a YouTube video coming out. <laughs> You're going to buy it flocked, like from the, from the place? They're going to flock no, it for you? No, I have to flock it. it I have to flock it myself. So, Oh, my gosh. I just got the stuff in the mail. My husband's like, oh, my God, you're going to make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see this one. I know. Okay. Oh, so uh, Catherine's trying oh, yes. to. Uh, <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> Okay, I'm unmuted. All right, now we're talking about our very own decorating styles now, and that's what I'm super excited about. And like you, I am a thrifter, and I love to recycle things. Yes. I think of Christmas as putting your personal touch on something. I love to shop. I was in retail for 31 years, but I used to love to shop. Yes. <laughs> I shop differently. I shop differently. I look for things that are affordable. I buy Christmas after Christmas, 90% off. 
And right yes. now, going into Thanksgiving, I'm using 80% of what I already have and buying 20% just to add that special touch. So I put some things here on the table to share with you guys so that someone out there would know you don't have to do that much to decorate for That's Christmas, right. but add the finishing this. touches. Now I'm gonna start. Tori, give me just a few seconds. Yeah, here. no problem. Because yeah, just definitely tell us so what what you use, like what you have, and then what you what you put. Absolutely. Now you see here, I got my tree up one tree. I have three trees, and this one I put up last night because they're <laughs> I have to balance the, the other side of yeah. the <laughs> So I'm like, okay, let's just do this one tonight. And behind me is just a floral arrangement where I wanted to make the point of if you love silk flowers and they're basically their normal colors then just add that pop of color for Christmas. If you're into metallics, add something shiny. You see that little silver leaf kind of stuck right there. Add that in there. Now you're done with Christmas. How effortless is that? You don't have to go over the top. This succulent is always in my kitchen. So here's what I did. You see that little snow in there? It looks like it's snowing. Wow. Um, just take a little fake snow. I always have this, like $2, and just sprinkle that on the top. You've got decorations for Christmas. I'm considering the person that works two jobs, one job, or whatever, but yet they don't have time, and then they go to all these parties, and they get home, and they're like, oh my God, I don't have anything, and their spirit gets a little down. So sprinkle a little Christmas around. If you've got these little darlings, which I know everyone does, one in here, and these little things, they're like a dollar for like five of them. Put that in there, a little sparkle. So now you've got some little things around your home. Take a box, put a bow on it. It doesn't have to be a shiny box. Any box you can find. Just put a ribbon on it and you've got that decoration going. When you think about bows, think about your walls as well. Entertain your walls for Christmas. A lot of us have artwork up all the time, but yet we get sick and tired of it, but you don't want to go out and buy extra money. Cover it up for about six weeks during the holidays. This is a canvas, here you go guys, that I messed up a piece of artwork on, <laughs> and then we just added a ribbon to, put a bow on it, and now this is on the wall. So if I did three of these straight across, or even in the bathroom, above the toilet on a little shelf, there's my decoration. I'm done. One dollar for wrapping paper. These are all in one pack for a dollar as well. But it's just a way to bring your personal touch to your space. And then you can just have that warmth at home in little spaces. And you don't have to go out and clean up the whole thing. I'm putting up garland this year. I didn't do that last year. I felt like I've always wanted the staircase. But now, why am I not decorating the staircase? So I got garland on sale at 90% off last year where I paid just a dollar and 99 cents. So that's how I got most of my Christmas supplies. So other things like my Christmas ornaments in a bowl that I have out every day, I've got quick and easy decorations, just add a little greenery. And I think someone mentioned earlier about the love of green, but add greenery to your decorations. I know metallics are in, but fusing a little bit of greenery, that nature piece just gives it all the warmth and it also makes it personal. You know, it shows your love of nature. So just a few things and always use candles. Candles just warm the soul, I guess. And they calm you down because the hustle and bustle of running in and out all day long, just trying to keep up. If you light a candle, ah, you can just relax, you know? Um, Look for things this holiday season that are already on clearance, things from the summer, from the fall. They're already on sale at 90, 75 to 90% off. I shopped yesterday. And I talk about, thought about all these things that I could use for Christmas with just a coat of paint, you know? And if you've got the budget to buy new things, that's great. But if you don't, think about these things differently when you're seeing them out for clearance this time of year but those are just a few little diy ideas that i've worked on and they're easy these will save you time money and just help you relax take the pressure off like and that's you it for said, now. yeah no what like you said the summer stuff is on sale us being in southern california we could buy those pineapples mm -hmm. and gra grab some gold paint and put like three of them Absolutely. together on a tray and that would say it would read as Christmas. So Absolutely. there you're right. You can totally go out and um, you could tell she and I are re are repurposers. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, go out and get that gold paint and I, that's I amazing. That. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, what other things that you can repurpose here? I'll just share this. Might as well I'll put it up there if you guys got a pen, just or even a screenshot. Um, give me a second. <laughs> Hold on. My son went out on his skateboard and came home with a chair and said, I figured you could use this for something. That's, that's how <laughs> yeah. much I repurpose. I was I like, you came it. home with a chair? Turn it into a plant stand. Train and barley, train and barley. <laughs> Turn it into a plant stand or something. Cut out a hole in the chair. That's exactly what I did. I cut the back off of it and there you go. Good to go. So a couple of things that you can repurpose that you might have lying around your house already are lanterns, Absolutely. trays, bowls, jars and vases, cake stands, um, picture frames, and even boxes and baskets. So you I love those cylinder. Um, I have a whole bunch of those cylinder um, vases, glass vases for, um, from the Dollar Tree. Oh, love and I those. Use them all. I know you can use them as floral vases. You can fill them with candies. You can ornament. Those, I love that. Those paper straws in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can put um, ornament balls. I mean, you can do anything with those. Absolutely. So those are one of my favorite things to use. Bobby, do you have anything? Oh, let me unmute you. <laughs> you might, you might already be talking to us, but you're not yet. So do you have any um, things that you reuse that you might just have laying out? Actually, I do. Um, I, and I tell you, I don't know what's going on, but I can't see anything. So I, if you're looking downside my face, there we go. Anyway, yes. You know what I used to do? Because my mom actually got me to... I think my mom at one time was doing nine Christmas trees every year. She would do different Christmas trees and it's the whole, whole idea of theming. Well, you know what, one year I decided I kind of, you know, became my mother, you know, when that happens, you start talking to yourself, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I ended up doing was I took a, um, one of the, I took a small Christmas tree and I went into the, my son's toy box and I went in and I did it all, all different kinds of cars and had it there and I had used ribbon around the cars. It was the cutest tree ever. And it was just made up of toys from their toy box. So um, I've done that before. Um, I've just gone, it again, when you can do a theme tree, if you're at the dollar store and you see like Rachel, right, pink, if you saw a bunch of different pink things, it doesn't matter if it's not Christmas. Once it goes onto a Christmas tree, it's Christmas. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've used a lot of different things through the year. I've even used the little uh, dishes, you know, the dishes that you can buy at the dollar store and put ribbon on them and turn into a cute little, it, it was all like little different china um, cups and things. It turned out so darn cute. Oh, and it was because at the time I had no money. I had no money. I had no money. I had two little kids and I would, you know, but I had ribbon. <laughs> so yeah, I thought, okay, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Put a ribbon on it, <laughs> put it on the tree and oh, poof, man. you've got a Christmas tree. And everybody thought I was so, you know, creative and everything. And I was like, well, thank you. Because, you know, you make do. That's the art of making do, which I love. Yeah, we had a, um, so in 2012, my house got, this is a picture of my house, the first floor of our house, it got flooded after Superstorm Sandy, and um, we just couldn't get to any of our, our decorations, so we did buy a box full of just simple decorations and did color lights, like I never really do color, I always go for more white lights, but really, um, the extra added Bling to all of this was I took the Christmas cards that we were getting or just the inspiration of letters that we were getting and I was cutting those out tying some twine on them and putting those on the tree and so wow. that is like all the paper that's on that tree um, another thing that we did too is um, we put this tree the base of it on casters so they were able to work around it and it really just brought everyone more up into the Christmas spirit and it was really nice to have because we didn't have That's much great. back then at that time. But so I yeah. still use that base now because I like to be able to move the tree around because I do. Uh -huh. I, so I live in New York City and we do, we don't have a gigantic home. So uh, we're able to move that around depending on, you know, where we need to arrange certain things, whether it's conversation areas or um, setting up a buffet table or anything like that. Uh -huh. So 
you know, That's the story, the base of my Christmas tree, both of them, they are on a piece of cardboard. I can just spin it around with my foot, you know, when I'm working on it. And last year I used That's it. That's a great idea. So just having that piece of cardboard under the tree, it's just, just the size of the actual tree base so it, don't, it doesn't stick out. You can just spin it around just with your foot and vacuum around it or whatever, whether it's carpet or hardwood, it works like a charm. Oh my That's gosh. That's a great idea. Good idea. So good idea. A furniture glider. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's oh, fabulous. That's awesome. That's, That's what you can make, idea. a big Christmas tree furniture glider. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's a great I idea. I call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, another part of the whole recycling thing was is to um, uh, you know, those old poor those poinsettias, the the fake poinsettias that you yeah. know are up in the attic. Pluck those bad boys off, and you can stick them into the yeah. garland or into your tree, oh, I and love that. I love um, that. you know, so something might get a little. But give it to your life. Throw it on the tree. Yeah. So Beverly, what let me Catherine just check in with you. So well, cool. I wanted to show you guys, you know, those old ornaments, the big ornaments, which are so, so on trend. But last year at Lowe's, they had boxes of them and they were 99 cents. So these are the Dollar Tree little candle holders. You glue it to the top. Oh, now you've uh -huh. got a different piece for your house. And then once you wow. glue them, you can scale white, put them on a coffee table. Look at that. These yeah. are 99 cents each. So basically $4, I've got something that looks like it came from a high-end store. Dude. You That's could start idea. off with that too. I would, I could imagine that would be really pretty to, if you were putting something on the market to have a little bit of that touch in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of the scale. So, uh, uh, where were you? Where'd you go? Where'd my question go? So Beverly asked, um, how many colors should you use when decorating? Rachel, you want to take that one? Um, you know, I think I usually do like two to three. So you have your green, which is a neutral, right? Um, and then maybe I will do, you know, a lot of people uh, on trend color, I see in a lot of homes is teal. So what I might do is I would get, you know, bulbs in maybe like a teal and silver or even a teal and orange, you know, a cool and a warm. Um, so you know, green, uh, basically like the three colors is what I like to keep it at. Just cohesive, really cohesive. Catherine. Metallic definitely in there for sure. I love that idea of, of the warm and the cool together, but I always like to infuse some shade of white. I love white. I think white just adds the brightness. I love the white lights. So yes, I love it. Even when I'm doing red, I got to have the red and white, the red and green and white. And I am now branching out into those rose golds, which I think are really, really pretty, and to the pinks. So it's taken me a while, but you'll probably see a whole lot more of that going on my channel next year with DIYs. I'm in love with the rose golds. Well, pink has really, you know, in, in, as far as like decorating interior design. Yeah, we were both, we were all just in high point. It made yeah. it big for last, last yeah. year at, at market, and then this year it was seen more as a neutral. Where last year it was like, oh, pink, like people were shocked to see pink in interior. Ah, right. And then this right. year you saw, you know, much more in the sofas, and it, it's mm -hmm. just kind of blush is kind of a normal thing, and and rose gold is a beautiful um, metallic. It's beautiful. I love that it's got a little matte. A little yeah. Matte mm -hmm. it, so. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so Bonnie Kirk is saying, love Catherine's story about her son bringing a chair via a skateboard. <laughs> um, that is great. That's my baby. Beverly, <laughs> Beverly <laughs> Donna <was> says, so <laughs> and my son is tall and thin, guys. And can you yeah. see him with, with the skateboard coming down the street and then for what once he ring the doorbell. And I'm like, why is he with the doorbell? doorbell? Because when I open the door, he's standing there with his chair. I saw this, and it's trash day tomorrow, and I knew you could do something with it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, funny. what do you say when your child brings a chair home on a skateboard? What do you say? <laughs> okay. Thank exactly. you. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. What do you guys think? To, so do you guys collect anything? for the holidays? Is is there anything that you have you have grown a collection of? Like my, I never wanted collections, but then my husband, we just started collecting a Christmas village and now it's getting a little bit out of control, but <laughs> people like to collect a lot of stuff. So are yeah. there ways wow. that you can control that so it doesn't look so much like clutter? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. if you guys have tips on that and anything that you collect. I, I am, oh, go ahead, go ahead. 
she going? Oh, I'm a collector, but not not a Christmas collector. Um, one of the fun things that my, and my husband's a collector too. So we have we we can border on order, uh, you know. Sometimes <laughs> yes, so, all of us. Uh, one yeah. of the things that he collects that I love to bring out um, at Christmas time is he collects vintage camping gear. And there's huh. um, a brand called Coleman, which is like a mm -hmm. green, this really cool, beautiful green that looks wonderful at Christmas. So if we do the Coleman lamps with some pine cones and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but it, I only bring an edited amount from, the, from his collection in. So that's what I do. If you have something that's that's kind of gotten out of control. You need to um, edit it down. Edit. Mm -hmm. Totally rotate it. Now Sorry, I'm not Kat. a collector per se, but I have a fondness for Waterford crystal, and I love anything that sparkles with cut glass. So when I held up this bowl, you noticed I was doing like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, when I this didn't start out as a collection, but when I was a secretary for eleven years in Macy's, my boss would always give me crystal, and I was like, okay, I'm, you know, my God, I love this. So the other people who couldn't stand crystal would always give always give me their pieces. So it began to be a collection. So I, I mean, imagine that people not liking water for it and giving it to you. And recently when I went on vacation in um, Destin, Florida, I went into a store and the ladies said, do the raffle for these Waterford glasses. It was a Waterford outlet. I won two glasses. Who knew? I'm a tourist and I win two glasses. But <laughs> I love crystal. I love cut glass and I have a fondness for Waterford and Marquee. So I love things that sparkle. This is my sparkle all year long. So I'm not into the bling category per se, but this is my sparkle. Pretty. So. Very well, I, I do. I collect snowmen. Isn't that cliche? <laughs> but I love them. <laughs> I'll just, true confessions of a stager. I do. I, I have my snowmen. And what I do is, I mean, it could get a little creepy, you know, if you've got all those eyes following you. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I like to make sure that when I do have a collection of something, is that I group it together so that it has a strong presence rather than a little bit you know sprinkled all around the room because then it becomes room dandruff right, right. so um instead when you group it okay good yeah there you go so it's like so i'd like to tell again i'd like to tell a story so um i actually do some snowmen on the other side of the fireplace at christmas and it's it's just a little i have other pieces it's not just snowmen you know i, I incorporate like felted christmas trees and things so there's a little story that's being shared so i love to do that and then um, going back to what you said earlier, Catherine was the, um, the art. I change it out. I have snowman art. And again, my home is arts and crafts. So a lot of the things are, are, you know, rustic wood and things. And I have one piece that's my favorite. It's like a window and there's three little snowmen that are peeking in. I love that piece. And so when that piece goes up, it's Christmas. So yeah, cliche, snowman, that's me. You know, Dollar Tree yeah. has these beautiful bags that are snowmen, and, and they're so pretty. You can put them in a frame. I did that last year. Uh -huh. Up on the ledges. It's so fun. Oh, well, I'll have so to guys, check that out. Some collection tips. So if you are a collector, um, and let's say your collection looks like this picture, you may yeah. want to dumb it down a little bit and use all the best of what you have. Um, keep it out of the main areas because then it's going to look a lot more like clutter. Mm -hmm. And definitely use varying heights, depth, and sizes to make it a little bit more interesting. You can use symmetry too, which is mm -hmm. just what you have on one side is mimicking what you have on the other side. And also try and merge it with whatever story you have. Oop, Catherine's showing us some stuff. So guys, either take a quick picture of this or um, write it down real quick. But let me go back to Catherine. She's about to show us some more stuff. Well, this is from Bonnie, who's at the airport. I wanted her to yeah. see my mercury glass snowman, which is DIY let me last see. year. I'm going to oh, try yeah. and put a hat on it. That is, Can you see it? That is so cute. That yeah, is so darn cute. I love it. I love it. it. That, that um, is so but cute. Yeah, these are glass bowls from, um, where did I get these from? Walmart. And the top one is yeah. Dollar Tree. So this is all a DIY from last Wait, year. What, oh my gosh. It? What was it originally? Uh, these like, are just regular mixing bowls from Walmart. No way. That, yeah. Yeah. that is fabulous. That is fabulous. Without me having to. 
<laughs> without taking it. Oh, I see. So you've got you like two sets. It. That is so you, cute. So you got two sets One. and you fuse them together. That is, that's yeah. brilliant. With E6 yeah. Blue. So I have a new, you have a new subscriber. Kat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just Kat, me too. Oh, me to too. Channel. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So darn cute. Yeah. What's yeah. The, when you said snow man, I was like, I have to get up and show her this. this is so there you fun. go. I remember watching that one. We we've also done um, collabs too. On didn't you do this one last year with us? Um, you're the one who put it together, right? Take your favorite Christmas. Yeah, this is the one where we did the ugly sweater. Yeah, with the ugly sweater, take your favorite Christmas yeah. carol and make and make a DIY. <laughs> That's what you made, right? That is too funny. That is too funny. Yeah, and that was a desperate <laughs> move, but I, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is too good. short. You gotta laugh, right? You gotta laugh. There you go. <laughs> yes. So I think other things that you could do too is is use nature along with uh, your decor. So we talked about using some plants, and uh, you could use fruits, like Rachel said. Um, Pomegranates are beautiful at this time. Yes. Think about, you know, um, even artichokes and pomegranates. Think about yes, the kind beautiful. of colors. They're a little bit off the typical red and green, but those look beautiful in bowls on your, on yeah. your, you know, mm -hmm. tables or, or um, what do you call it? islands? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at, is that a twig? What is that? This is a twig from my yard. I painted it white. So this there is you go. Oh, yeah. I have spray paint. You paint it white. There you go. And because right there. Doesn't that look natural? Yeah, it does. does you out every time. One of the things that I love to do, so when my kids, my kids just started their fall break and during fall and winter break, we'd love to do things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And what I would do, because I'm bohemian, I would probably wrap some of that in, in yarn because I love mm -hmm. like bright colored yarn and kind of give like it a little that. bohemian edge. So um, I like that. Yeah. So yeah, that's we need, to, we need to do a collab, Catherine. There you go. <laughs> okay. You know what? Yeah, I was going to say, I used to live in Oregon, and they have huge pine cones up there. I mean, they're like a foot long, right? So we used to oh, take that. them, and, you know, if you get them wet, they close all up. And so then we'd roll them in glue and then roll, roll them into the glitter. Yes. And then when they were dry, they would just pop open. I loved them. They were just so pretty. And wow. you could actually use those big pine yeah. cones. Like you that. could use, yeah, you could do a big pine cone, right? And use it to put your Christmas cards in because they're those huge pine cones, right? So that was an easy thing to do every year. Yeah. <laughs> Beverly idea. said we've got awesome. her head spinning. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> so you guys were just at the hour mark. If you guys have any questions, put them in. I think, um, would, would, are you guys interested in going for maybe another 15 minutes or so? No problem. Sure. I can. I mean, what am I doing? I'm sitting here at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good. Um, so I just you realized. Do you know what? There's no, there's no decorations here. I just realized. Oh, wow. I don't we should see. all get in the car wow. and come over. Look, see? There's, there's no kid. Airport rescue. Yeah, that would be it. I just thought that could be a TV show. That's yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. There you go. That would be fun. So what's next, guys? What did, what have we missed? Let me see here. So, all right, let's talk about entryways for a second because okay. you, you've got to deal with um, everyone's stuff if they're coming in for a holiday party or something like that. So, mm -hmm. so what are some things or tips that you guys do um, ahead of time? Because, right, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for us. We're going to be hosting um, mm -hmm. to make sure we're able to give the people the room that they need and we're just not all on top of each other and cluttered. So or do you have any, any entryway tips? My entryway is very small. So I know not to crowd out the floor area. You're dragging in your luggage, which I would prefer you pick it up, but it is very narrow. So I'm not going to put this oversized table out there with things swagging all over it when I know there's very limited room because accessibility is very important to me in and out of the front door. But keep that area, especially the floor, you want to keep that clear, unless you've got a really decent size foyer. But most of the decorations are on the wall, and that way they're out of the way. Right, and I think it, I think it is important. You need to, even if you don't have, let's say, um, your front yard or something, that you introduce the holiday decor, whatever holiday it is, right? Right in the, mm -hmm. right in the beginning. Set the scene, whatever your theme is going to be, and put that right out there. 
in the entryway. So people will start, and we do this with staging a lot too, but people will start picking up on the theme subliminally and be like, wow, yeah, this, this feels cohesive. It feels warm. It feels welcoming. Um, so these are a few of the other things too. I love that. Definitely reduce your clutter closet, right? I mean, yeah. At this time of year, I don't know about Rachel. Rachel's in her bathing suit, but yeah. <laughs> this time of year, well, she doesn't have any clutter yeah. at all. <laughs> this time of year, we're dealing with coats and all of those other things. So try and make room in your in your entryway closet if you can to hang coats mm -hmm. for people, Absolutely. or have a designated place to put those. Um, mm -hmm. and like what um, Catherine was saying, keep your walkways clear and bring the outside in. We do this too, even with stagings, right, Bobby? That's uh, right. That's right. Because right there, that room, the entryway, that is the transition from the outside to the inside. So Absolutely. we always put Absolutely. some type of a plant or flower there to really, yes. um, to, to make that transition a little bit more seamless. Totally. totally. I'm all about life. If you have a little life somewhere, it's good. And as, especially in the winter time when folks are coming in, I will have um, a chair definitely because I have plenty of room in my in my entryway. I like to have a chair there so that they can slip their shoes Absolutely. off, so that they're not bringing mm -hmm. the outdoors in. You know, yeah. <laughs> in the so, mm -hmm. exactly. And I love to put down um, like a holiday themed uh, rug for that as well. In oh, fact, you know what I do is I buy an inexpensive one and I throw it away at the end of the you know. So I put it down. They can come in, sit down, take off their shoes. Um, I used to keep a big uh, bowl of those really thick socks because, um, you know, it's just nice to be able I to like pick because not everybody wears socks. And so they just, they always say, oh, you're such a mom. And I go, God, I was born to be a mom, I guess. I don't know. Sit down, take your shoes off, put the socks on. <laughs> well, a lot of people too, so, they don't want to take their shoes off if they don't have socks because exactly they could be OCD about themselves or they just, yep. you know, their feet get cold. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I, I got you know, uh, a, lot a whole of collection of socks. I love what to see that? the smaller candy bars at the uh, I mean at the entryway where it's just whether it's a Hershey's Kisses or something in a small container mm -hmm. because when people first get there they want a little pick me up and then that's just cute. So a small scale little mm -hmm. candy bar on yeah. a table in the entryway just says welcome and come on and relax. You know? Yeah. I what agree. about before? So how do you guys uh, decorate your front yards? Rachel, you want to start? Yeah, we just, we're pretty minimal. Um, again, wow. we have a, we have a mid century, which, you know, very straight lines. Um, we just do basically a lot with lights and that's something mm -hmm. that I, we kind of didn't, we've kind of skipped, skimmed over. I think lights, if you're going to do anything, lights are so magical mm -hmm. um i just love this time of the year that you know when you're driving down the street and everybody's got their lights out on their home mm -hmm. um but yeah similar to that we do simple lights um not a lot of adornment on the on you the use home. a lot of color or is it more just white lights we like the white yes, yes. i love white lights mm -hmm. bobby how about you well, uh you guys if you come to my house during the holidays, it's like a crayon okay, okay. box blew up. Okay, come on over. It's like the crayon box blew up. I love, I love, I don't know, I just love the story of all the different colors. I did white lights for a lot of years, but it's interesting. I used to live out in California and I did specific parts of the houses, house where were white and then I would do other areas and other colors. It was always, it was very, very particular. And it's like with this house, there's just something about it that screams for multiple colors so I do that I actually put a tree out on my front porch my front porch is um, probably I don't know Tori did you see it it's like maybe 20 by 20 the front porch area and yeah, um, there's like a seating a whole area room within itself <laughs> yeah and wow. so I, I put a Christmas tree outside out there and I was so excited before I left because you know what I got I was so excited I got myself a five foot round wreath because when you look at the front of my house, there's the steps that go up and then to the right goes, is that big porch. And then to the left, my house is a little different. Um, you go down the side, there's the front door. Um, well, there's this big bullseye window. So I am now putting a five foot wreath on there. And I'm so excited. I got the uh, burlap. I love my burlap uh, to do the ribbons and to, uh -huh. to put 
color into that and that's going to be the bullseye for my house so it's like i might put a little ribbon around the um the light that's in the in the ha in the um, yard and maybe a little something uh tied up or something on the mailboxes because we decorate mailboxes do you guys do that do you guys because yes, here, that's we like do a thing. here yeah that's like a thing i i had yeah. not seen that and it's fun and so as you go down the anyway so but I'm excited about the wreath. So maybe I'll have to do something with the wreath. You guys are inspiring me to do we'll some get, videos on that. Oh, I'm gonna decorate my I'm gonna decorate my mailbox. I'm I'm like literally getting ready to go down the Pinterest hole on that. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's fun. Cool. Yeah. Catherine, how it's about fun. you? Catherine, how about you? Curb appeal. Well, I always do decorating. Our front porch is the focus to the decorating. The yard is, you know, it's it's got too much shrubs and we're like all over the place with it. And I don't want to go out there and light any shrubs and I don't want to worry about any squirrels attacking the lights because they do in our area. So I am only going to put the decorations on the front porch. I have topiary balls are about this big. So they're going to be laying around in white lights. And then there's a wreath that goes above a bench in white lights. And my color comes from the ribbons. So that's as simple as it gets out there. I gotcha. do want to do the wreath on the front door this year. Uh, however, I have two doors, so I'm going to cut the wreath in half so that when you open the door, it just opens that flat. That's going to be interesting. So, I love that. I, I that's so love cute. that idea. I You'll love see that the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. I think that's adorable. Yeah, I love that. So uh, I put this screen up before, but I just wanted to say, so if you, I mean, I'm not, um, I am not, I mean, I like blow ups. That's not an issue here, but you want to avoid blow ups if you're going to be selling your home. So that's yes, why I put that on yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. You mm -hmm. want, I don't know. In New York, I think a lot of people, they just throw up stuff and then that's it. Like the string of lights is like halfway falling down and then it's back <laughs> up. It's just, it's crazy. So I always think it should be tasteful, not tacky. Yes. And um, yes. kind of set either a scene or a theme um, and use two or three colors outside. Minimize your decor, you know, make a statement with the piece rather than just putting a million pieces, a million blow ups right. in your front yard. Um, so and again, do it after your marketing pictures are taken. <laughs> yes. Yeah, do it after your marketing pictures are taken. Just trust you. me on that one. <laughs> yes. So. There is that. Has anybody said any, asked any questions? Catherine, do you have a YouTube channel using gold bells from Dollar Tree? Didn't you just do that? I did. There is a video that went up on yesterday, and I think it's gotten over 4,000 hits right now, mm -hmm. but there are about 20 options for using these bells. Here is the, the bottle wrap. Did you guys see that one already? So I did pretty see bottle, bottle. these bells. Yeah, I, it's on the, I saw you doing the Christmas Dollar Tree, Tree bell, so you can cut the top off. Okay. Yeah, so there is a video out there. It's the very last video that I uploaded. Yes. I'm going to be binge watching. Oh, you yeah. saw the video. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Beverly. Okay, um, what else do we have here? And apparently, I'm almost out of power. I thought I was plugged in. Oh, oh, no. So if I go, so if I go away, I love you guys. So I'm gonna be in early. So we'll see we how long I hold out. There you go. We got our music. There you go. That was good. <laughs> so if you're gonna be stringing lights, let me just put this screen up here. Maybe just shoot a picture of it, or if you want to write it down real quick, um, because I, I really think the lights are so important. You know, so map out your scheme carefully before installation. Right. And then measure, measure the distance too. So you can shop appropriately. You know, if you don't have all the lights and you need to go out shopping, measure the size of your house or how, how high the bush is. So you know how much to get and you're not either spending, you know, you're not getting too much or too little. Um, use obviously only the cords and lights that are approved for outdoors. You don't want to end up having a house that no house because it went up in yeah. clean, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's not a good look. That's not a good look. No. <laughs> Nor is it really that much fun then. Um, <laughs> so the saying is, right, never use more than three strings of lights on any one run. So when plugging the lights together, you want to make sure they're the same length mm -hmm. of the string. So if you have a 50-foot line, use another 50 foot line. Don't start mixing it all up because again, that's another fire hazard and use green, brown, or white. 
Um, those are the cords to use and coordinate that depending on where you're going to be hanging it. So if you're hanging it on your gutter, of course, white um, cords you're going to want to use. Brown or green is either for bushes or the grass or, or sometimes the roof. I want to, you know what I want to do, guys? Like, I would love to, did you ever watch like Christmas with the Cranks? <laughs> okay. No? <laughs> no. With, with Tim Allen? I didn't say I was. All right, so. I believe in it. So they, they actually decorate their roof with life and they can do it on like a sideway diagonal. Now for anyone who knows me, I live literally by the airport. Like you could see JFK tower from my bedroom window. So I just feel like that would be so nice to see as you're leaving yes. <laughs> on the plane, <laughs> decorating my roof, you know? There you go. That would be good. Okay, Tori, I want to see that video. Oh, <laughs> I want to see that. Bit. And I want Sal to be um, the star of that video and it fast motion. That would be great. Tell it's Sal on the roof, putting those lights up. I'd oh, watch. Yeah. He'll love it. He'd be like, now, I don't know if my um, audio is going to last much longer. It seems like I'm going to blank out in just a second, but I do want to say this to all of our viewers. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. Tori is a I don't know. She's just like a goddess here on YouTube to me. And I, I, I don't care. I just love this lady to pieces and she's smart. I've read her book and I've got another book to read. So her success is phenomenal and I will forever be a fan. So I love Tori guys you should know that I talk about her enough on my channel. Um, I do <laughs> want to say some final parting tips is to just do a prep prepping your Christmas decorations. Mm -hmm. Do a prepping area, have your scissors, your tape, wire cutters, whatever you're going to do for the holidays, have it right there and try not to have your prep area as the Christmas area. I work from my garage, we're fortunate enough to have one, um, but if I wasn't, I'd be working like in my kitchen in a small corner and make sure that I have everything there so you don't have trash kind of gathering all over your house as you're setting up for right. Christmas and getting frustrated and hiding stuff when guests suddenly just pop in. But I do believe in just taking inventory of what you already have and then adding to that with an extra 20%. And don't overspend because like these ladies are saying, if you're in the market for selling your house, you could definitely make sure that it is ready to be sold and not necessarily a hot mess from all the things that you've got scattered all over <laughs> yeah. from the holidays and just collecting stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, well, where um, for so for people who are not following you, Catherine, where is the best place to go. Where do you want them to go to, to continue to get your wonderful wisdom? Because this woman, she could make something out of nothing. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I live for. My channel is amateur decorating like a pro and that's amateur decorating like a pro. It is not our title, not any of our titles. It is our attitude to have a positive attitude when going into decorating if you don't know how to do something then do the work to figure out how and never ever give up just have an amazing time somebody posted the link Thank you I so did. Much, Tori. <laughs> just have an amazing time decorating your home and don't get about anything don't just out about anything because on my channel we figure it out I've learned how to do upholstery and I posted an entire series of upholstery projects this past summer, mm -hmm. which is why I wasn't at the Dollar Tree buying supplies <laughs> for decorating. That's good. <laughs> Bobby, so that's you, it, guys. And thanks for tuning in. Yes. Thanks for being with us, Catherine. Bobby, do you, where uh, would people find you? More information about you? Uh, they can go to bobbymcgrath.com. Come see me. Sounds good. So if you guys are in, if you're in um, the, the North Raleigh North area North. and you need help with staging your house, uh, Bobby gives you all of the resources right up front in a consultation. Um, and you've also got a couple of other things going on online, right? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So um, I, I am looking forward to, I, I was actually up here in Canada, and although apparently I can't speak right now, I came up here to speak. So I welcome the opportunity to speak to groups, um, <laughs> motivational speaking, as well as training. And then I also have some online training for realtors and stagers um, that um, is, is available. And then I also do on Wednesday nights, um, I speak with a stager out of Australia. And I've been training Australian uh, realtors about the world of home staging. So there's, I love, I call it teaching and preaching. 
So I love to do all of that too. Amen, sister. And if you, ha- if you haven't <laughs> noticed, like Bobby chooses her words wisely. She knows how to talk the talk. Like she, she empowers you with words. So thank you, Donna. Thank you. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thanks, Tori. <laughs> Rachel, how about you? Where can people find you? Did I mute you? Oh, oh let's unmute you. Okay. Sorry about there. that. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Can you hear me yeah. now? Um, so I loved your last parting words, Catherine. Um, I just wanted to say also, um, I focus on space, how spaces feel. So one one easy way to change how things feel is to clean and declutter. Um, use some of the aromatherapy that we talked about to, to reduce some of the stress and then layer in the color. So those are like my four best practices for when you when you're going into the holidays. If you Mm -hmm. want to connect with me, my platform is Facebook. I'm at Rachel Moriarty or Rachel Moriarty Interiors. I have a a daily live stream um, show there called Rachel's Daily Riffs. And if you're in the uh, design industry, I have a podcast called Design and Style, where we talk about um, getting visible, which is how I connected with Tori. We like to be visible. So connect there to Design and Style podcast. Is that right? That link, Facebook, Rachel, where are you? No. <laughs> Bye, guys. Don't follow that link. Rachel, put your link in there. <laughs> oh, it's good. So, I know. Tori always has trouble with my last name. It's so funny. <laughs> uh, oh, Tori uh, Art. Yeah. Sorry, Rachel. I still no love you. Problem. <laughs> So um, thank you guys so much for joining us live. Um, We're really excited to share our knowledge with you. I want to thank everyone who was an expert here today. You guys all have something special and unique to say, and I'm so glad that you took the time to come on with me and share your knowledge because I love you ladies. Um, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday. And we're starting off with Thanksgiving, which we didn't even talk about, right? Right. (laughs) We leaped all over it. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what my husband says. What about Thanksgiving? Like, I know. Oh. What about Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> it's all about the turkey. It's all about the turkey. <laughs> um, if you want to reach out with me, you could just head over to my uh, website, which is toritoth.com. Or you can follow me on my YouTube channel at Tori Toth Home. Uh, we do a lot of DIYs and how to's and just education to make your space feel at home. So oh, wait, I also have, I wanted to show you guys because Catherine's getting this, Rachel's getting this. There yes! she go, yes. Yes. So this, yes. Is, this is a new home planner that I created. Yes. And I love it. Inside, it's broken out by season. You can put two projects in per season so you can actually yep. sketch out your floor plan I here it. I love it put all of your um resources in here you could put your vendors um but it goes beyond that you know you can meal plan you can make sure you're getting your exercising in uh finances so this is an amazing book it also has uh like a monthly view mm-hmm. and then it breaks out a weekly view I'm so excited uh, so am i well, i love it i can't wait to well i got it I got to tell you that I actually, um, I actually got to, oh my God, is that my plane? They just noticed my plane's been changed. My gate's been changed. But I was going to say, I got to touch that book. I got to see the book. It is fabulous. So I was very excited for you. Congratulations, Tori. It's fabulous. And even checklists too. So if you guys don't know what you're doing, what you, what you should be doing, I'm, gonna, I'm giving you to-do lists because you're going to have to do these anyway, right? Perfect. So. Perfect. Um, you can put your holiday See, plans. That's why I love Tori. She looks at the whole package. This is your whole life you can plan out. I know. Love yep. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, planning is so important because it just, it reduces the stress on you. It, it reduces, it, it makes your life inside your home a lot better. It makes your holidays a lot easier too if you have a plan in place and you schedule it all out, right? That's right. And if you're a wild card like me, you need that. Yes. So let me put, I'll put that link in there. I mean, that's not why we did this, but I wanted to um, put this in here anyway. Cause I like, I literally just got it. Yeah. You so just landed last night with that. 
Yes, it's it's bit.ly forward slash make it home planner. So you can grab your copy there if you want it. I think I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a plan with me and I'm gonna create an own group so we can actually plan together, hold ourselves accountable. Um, so nice. it's gonna be amazing. That's I think wonderful. So much yeah. Fun. Great Christmas present. Yeah, holiday definitely. present. I'm like and telling you. Yes. Anyone buying a new house. So, um, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We still have Beverly, Bonnie, Brenda, Donna, Kay Barthelms, Peg, Mary. Um, we love you guys. And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much. Um, and happy holidays. Like I said. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Thanks for spending Saturday with us. And a Happy New Year. Yeah, that's good. Oh, bye, guys. Wonderful. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.